Yeah. Hey, Bill. You should go near the speaker. Go where like you, the speaker is right in front of you. See the speaker on the side there? If you go where it's pointing at you, so the sound comes your way. You're too far away. Oh, my God. Yeah, excited. I'm excited about the guys that are turning. That's really where it starts. I'm going to dive into your guys first and then, and then look from there. So, everything. Yeah, we have to hit Bill, get out of the side. Go more to go, go back so you can point forward. Yeah. You're at the side. You're not, you need to be a little more, more near a speaker. Step one, let's let's guys we got on the team. Obviously, Deontay, they're so super strong. Uh, you know, Ben's team with the offense, fine shooter, very talented. That, you know, has to communicate as well. So, uh, but you're always looking to be build and, and see where you're off to go. Back with five of them today. I just don't want to go through each of the names, but it could be five of them. I think five today. Frank Gibbon at the NFC South. I don't think you can make that decision, you know, based on, hey, status of the division right now. This is a whatever decision we make is you know, what what is best not just for this year, but you know you're looking on the horizon. You know, obviously the draft guy you're looking on the current moment. If you go free agent and go Derek Carr, I mean I think Derek is you know he's it's so, yeah. not trying to put that uh, so there's a, a good five year window, you know, a sculpture five year window there. So um, sure, we might like everything. I'm hoping to take that beyond that. I'm going to say that. I mean, I, I think all options would be on the table. I think all options would be on the table. Uh, we're going to do what we think is best for our team, both in the near term and the long term. It's a hard, it's, it's, it's tough for a We all know it's hard to force to play. Uh, you're so dependent. There's so many factors that go into good quarterback play. Uh, tangible and intangible qualities. They can't, some can be measured, some can't. So, um, and then you're sometimes, depends on the circumstances that you find yourself in, and you don't get as long windows to prove yourself anymore. So, uh, that's what makes you great, though. That's why you love. Evaluating and playing the quarterback position because it is a big challenge. That's why. That's why uh, this is uh, both an art and a science. So, you know, I like to say if, if there's ten things to evaluate. How much really the question, and this differs from club to club, person to person within the club, how much weight you put on there's 10. I guess Bill's Wi Fi is uh, going. I think a lot of that is connectivity, but um, 
Let's see here. Hey, everybody, welcome. Small part of this, and all that is done collaborative, and a collaborative effort. You know, with Scott, you know, Peter, our GM, yeah. Mr. Tether, uh, you know, talking through those dynamics. I find that when you collaborate on it, it's like a checks and balance system to make sure we're all thinking the same thing on the long term. Frank, I know it's uh, maybe a little surreal to be back here. It's still good feelings um, back in Indianapolis. Oh, great feeling to be back in, you know, in so many ways. We're just walking through the street and seeing people here. It's, that's one of the great things about Anacor. We need a lot of great people, uh, worker, media, everywhere. Uh, it's, it's great. And so uh, this is a unique time, right, where everybody gets together. So, but looking forward to the work that we are doing here, evaluating these college players and building this roster uh, is something special. I'll be there a sec. There's so many reasons. But for so many reasons, mainly, you know, it was the right fit. You know, I got to you know, get fired. You don't know if you're going to get a chance again, right? You know, this year or any year. So you don't take any friends. So it probably worked out well for me that I had a chance to kind of regroup and, uh, you know, got the opportunity to interview uh, with Carolina and with, another, and with another team. And I thought those went well. And obviously, I felt like from the time I walked into Mr. Pepper's house, there was an instant connection with me. And, like Nicole, um, Scott Bitter, Dan Morgan, uh, Samir, old leadership team, Christy Coleman, the team president. I just felt like there was a genuine connection. The whole interview seemed, didn't seem like an interview. Well, Carol is there. It seemed like us already working together, even though you know, that process went for a couple of weeks in this interview. You don't know until the very end, but it felt easy. It didn't feel forced and it felt natural. <laughs> That, yeah, that's what we're evaluating right now. I mean, I think a lot of these guys are very talented, smart, um, have a lot of the quality, but we'll continue to make that evaluation. Super excited about our defense. I mean, you know, a big part of the formula, right, is you want to build a, a top level defense. We have many of those pieces, you know, up front. You know, you got Brian Burns, Derek Brown. You know, to start, I don't want to start naming everybody, you know, but those, those are two, those are two blue chip players. And it starts up front. So excited about them, excited about our whole defense. I'm excited to have uh, Jero Evero as our defensive coordinator and the staff that we can put together to really build a scheme that can take advantage of what our defense does well. And I really see that as a real centerpiece for our team in this coming year. In your evaluation, Yeah, I mean, every option is on the table. Every option. Moving up, moving back, signing for the agent. Every option is on the table. That's where we're at. In your evaluation, what makes Bryce Young a great quarterback? Highly intelligent, very fast processor, very poised, accurate pass, uh, you know, playmaker. Yeah, he checks, he checks a lot of boxes. He, 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 no moments too big for Very, very, very good player. It seems like a great young man. Uh, very Is the size great. of our concern? Yeah, it's always, yeah. Is it uh, is it something that uh, Drew Brees, right? I mean, look at Russell Wilson. So, uh, are there very many quarterbacks his size that are, you know, high high picks? No, they're not. But um, there are exceptions, and there's good reason that there's exceptions. That. And listen, everything I've seen, every positive thing that's been said about Bryce Young, he's earned. It seems warranted, and I think the discussion of where he's at and how everyone is viewing him right now is very warranted. Uh, he's earned that. Uh, he's earned that right. Uh, how he's played, how he's handled all the success that he's had. Uh, he's he's, a, he's an impressive young man. Coach, thank you.
Yeah, I mean, I, it's, I was one of the sitting down and this was half of going on. Uh, we just were committed to, uh, we were to doing whatever. He stood behind me on that. He gave us the money we needed to sign some of the coaches that we needed to sign. Obviously, getting the right thing. Talk about quarterback coach. You want to get Josh McCown 17 years. Josh and I have been talking about this for a little bit. So, we're very excited to get him. I'm very excited to get Parks Brazier. That's very testy. And I just think he's an incredibly bright young mind. His future is very, very bright. Uh, and then Thomas Brown is our, is our offensive coordinator. And through the interview process, Thomas just blew us all away. This guy has a real contact so much. Talking to him, he's kind of a leader and kind of mind. But I think it's really going to set up well for our quarterback. Coach, did you see out? Oh, well, can we do another? I'm, I'm actually live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Oh, we're, we're, I have a colleague. At the, we're, this is what we're doing at the yeah, NFL draft. Uh, colleague is there. We have two credentials, uh, Bills. Uh, I'm here in Georgia. He's there. So yeah, I'm, I'm just doing this live stream. Uh, uh, right? Click on coaches. We know the professional living. Combine. You'll see it. When you do, uh, like with Doug, it's feel prepared. Like I know walking into this job, I was telling some I was interviewed the other day on something asking a question. Oh, just, I, don't I love like, you too. If you don't know or anything or any, I just need I'm brown, um, having a clearer vision. Of my plan. Um, <laughs> I think it's overwhelmed when you get that first job as a head coach. It's a little. It can be a little yeah. bit overwhelming at first. You know, as they say, drink a beer. Coach Reich, when you so yeah, I think that's. Coach Reich, when you evaluate quarterbacks, Bill Walsh would say you would start feet first. Some people start with a view with their eyes. Where do you start in evaluating a quarterback? Physical evaluation. Yes, you get the game from the ground up, so footwork is incredibly important. But uh, you know, it's top to bottom, it's left to right, and every uh, in every way in between. It's the tangibles. It's intangibles. Uh, it's everything. That's what's so great about this week and this process and. In the ongoing process of 30 visits, you get Zoom calls with guys, you exhaust that process of evaluation. Frank, how would Will that potentially fit? Yeah, Will's another one of those young guys who's super talented. Obviously, he's got you know big arm, big big size, um, you know, has good experience, um, done a lot. You know, like unique circumstances, change coordinators, right? You know, playing at Kentucky, so dynamics of that. Um, those, how do you, how do you factor all that in? What does that all mean? And that's different to every club, every evaluator. But certainly, you know, Will's another one of those guys who's earned the right to be talked about. He's one of these top quarterbacks in the draft. Hey, we're going to take two more questions. Two more questions. I mean, you got to get, you got to get great players. This game is about players, so uh, it's about the player first and about the best players. Uh, you know, you, they're not independent. The neat thing is independent, but when you can get, as they say, a true difference maker, you get the difference maker. And, uh, and then you build around those players. So uh, that's, the way, that's the way we'll continue to work. And obviously sitting down with Scott Bitter, our GM, you know, excited to be working with him in building this roster, building this team. He and I really see things very similarly as far as how we want to build philosophically how we think about this team and where we're at right now. Right. So it's not the back to first look in the end. How does that shape make people I just think it's better in every way it's better for better me. You know, you, you you take the circumstances that you were dealt and the, the things that you did and that you were part of and you learn from them. The good and the bad. And there were and there was both of those. So um but you, you learn from those, but then you get to every year, and you have to – every year is an independent year from the previous. You, you take that experience from it and now into a different organization, and you obviously always want stability of quarterback. Um, I think that's that's a huge lesson learned for me for the first – from the last time around. You know, what is our best answer for stability of quarterback um, in, in the near term and long term future? All right, thank, thank you, folks. 
Hey, nice work, Bill. Nice work. Nice work. Uh, <laughs> Woo. So for those of you who don't believe in kettlebell workouts for the shoulders and upper arm, uh, <laughs> uh, that, was a, that was a workout. That's fun. You welcome to my world, Bill. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my 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 left side. I'm not. I'm right-handed, but my left side got one heck of a workout. I've got still some sort of throbbing in the oh. shoulder. Oh, but go, uh, go back, over there. Go back over there. You're going too far away. Go back over. I want to see something real quick. If you can. Yeah. Well, that that was as close as I was going to get, Sandy. You couldn't really tell where from where oh, you no, were. No, no. It's an entirely other reason I asked that. An entirely other reason. If you could go back over there. If you go back I mean, over, I can go back over there now, yes, but I'm yeah, going to yeah, circle yeah. around this one and come from the other side. That's great. But, um, That's great. I'm, yeah, my phone's going to die soon, though, unfortunately. I'm down to like 14% battery. Right, right. Turn the camera around the other way so we can see where you're going. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can take I do that on the screen? Yeah, take Let it on Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, you just, you just press the button. You should be able to turn your camera. There you go. Um, oh, okay. I'm switching to a different camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you switch your yeah. There you go. See, isn't that? Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Take us around. Yeah. See. Yeah, I'm gonna need to go charge my phone soon, but yeah, I'll get you with. Oh, wait. Here's a moment you'll enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> Say hello. Rick. All right. See the place to be. We're here. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Is that any? Uh, uh, is that any? Yeah. yeah. He's Turn it around. Let me see him. Uh, let me see. Well, let's see us. Let me see. Wait. So you? Let me see. Uh, yeah. So I'm streaming you, us. Zanny, what's up, dog? How you doing, man? You doing, bro? Uh, I am. I am here. Oh, uh, you know. Just... I'm just watching my mom and doing this at the same time. Technology, baby. I miss you. I love you. Yeah, love you're you. here. How you all doing? Love man? you, miss you. Were you, you? You're here in spirit, though. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm also here. Yes. I'm also yes, there. Sir. Credential too. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an they gave they gave us two credentials for the first time. So uh, yeah, we worked it out. I'm gonna keep uh, moving. I'm down to about thirteen percent. So yeah, a little bit more for my phone died. Yeah, we worked it out so that it worked really well. Uh, did Rick go? Where's Rick? Yeah. Ah, dog on it. Hey, Bill, who is that? And during the season, what was like the biggest shift, you know, going from Jacoby to Deshaun? What was like the biggest difference from say the offense? Yeah, I think there's some of the differences were really, really small. Uh, some, some were big. I think they're just two different players. There's obviously schematically things that you're going to do with your quarterback that has this skill set and this skill set. You're going to differ uh, while trying not to be totally different uh, so that you can transition completely uh, 180 in the middle of the season, but. They try to play to, to each of their strengths. What do you I think, I think we'll see. I, I think that's the truth. I think there's uh, options there. Uh, and I think Andrew and his crew are working through all those options, but I don't know. We don't have a definitive answer. Right now. Uh, talk about Bill Musgrave's offense now, top five runs out of shot. Is that something we should expect? Uh, that we know that's something Watson's going to do. Yeah, well, I think excited that Coach Musgrave, uh, his role has been helping across different areas. Uh, you, you mentioned the, that run game, and, and those are things that Bill uh, uh, did a lot of with Chip Kelly his year in Philadelphia. So that's just things that you're always trying to get better at what you do, and, and obviously Bill's had success with, with that area. So it'll be uh, that's one area of the run game, but there, there's a ton that he can help watch that. We can talk to each other, but just not about football. So we're still talking. Um, yeah, I, I think just getting on the same page on, on everything, you know, how we meet, how we structure practice, make sure he's comfortable uh, with different things. So, you know, you talk about everything under the sun with players in an exit meet, uh, and certainly try to do the same with Sean. So uh, I think we – I know we're uh, seeing the game very similarly. I think 
he's very excited about what we're going to be doing offensively, what we'll be doing as a team. And he's excited to go, go play some football in the spring. So. Yeah, as you know, though, Tony, it's March. So I think we have uh, plenty of time once we do get back together to try different things. And, and uh, there's no shortage to the amount of offense you can run. It's just a matter of what you hang your hat on and what you can get through that um, in the spring and summer. Well, there's a first thing I would tell you is Alex Van Pelt's one of the best teammates I've ever been around. Uh, ADP was in that quarterback room as, as really the main voice for the first two years. TC McCartney, a really good young coach, was in there. TC just finished his first year with our tight ends and did a great job. So just felt like with uh, Drew uh, leaving to go to Arizona, this was an opportunity for ABP to go back in there. And I say that because ABP and I are, are in every quarterback meeting. ABP took a step back so that Drew could have that voice in there and did a great job. So ABP is ready for whatever I feel like and we feel like is best for the team. So he's ready to do that. I think it brings continuity to the position. You know, I think I'm always cognizant of, of how many voices are talking to the quarterback and and there's different ways to do it, but I just feel strongly that with AVP's voice in there and myself, uh, we're going to move Ashton Grant, our, our young uh, offensive assistant, to that quarterback room. And, you know, that's a, a big opportunity for me to talk about the success we've had with the Bill Walsh Diversity Fellowship. Uh, Ashton was our first uh, person that we hired in that position in year one for us in 2020. He worked with the running backs and tight end backs. Who was previously our Bill Willis uh, diversity fellow is going to Arizona as a quarterback uh, coach. So that program is working. Uh, it's not just on the offense side of the ball, which I know is important, but uh, we're, we're crazy about developing our young coaches. And, and I think uh, we have some really good young coaches. I'm not going to name all of them, but I'm, I'm excited about all those guys. You know, and I would point out a guy like Stephen Bravo Brown. Bravo, we brought in college wide receiver. He worked two years on our defense. We moved him over to special teams. He's finished up his first year and he's going to go to second year special team. So we're trying to develop some young coaches. I think we got some really good ones. Hey, Bill. Who is that? I think that's all part of the process. I think you really do it every season, even when you maybe don't, when you have continuity, when you're maybe not bringing in some new coaches, you try to pull everything apart and look at it uh, year to year. But typically you really structure your day in half. You spend uh, half the day on personnel and watching college tape. You spend the other half on one of your offense or your defense or your special team. So we're spending plenty of time trying to, to look at what we're doing schematically and make sure that there's, there's we're turning over every rock uh, schematically to look at different things. And, you do have to put your scout hat on uh, February, March, April. And Just, you know, Andrew and his crew do a great job of listening to their coaches and hearing the coaches out. So uh, the coaches are watching a ton of tape. Honestly, it's the first time where I get to watch some tape. Now that we have the coaching staff hired, I hide up in my room here and just turn on the tape and, and watch, watch these young men. Coach, Coach Fancy, what insights has Coach Musgrave given you about his nephew, Luke? Yes, yeah, he's given us some good insights. Uh, we met with Luke this morning uh, at, with the coaches uh, or in the formal interview setting. He has given us some insight. Um, and it's, you know, it's good when you hire coaches from college, uh, whether not all of them have nephews that are in the draft, but they've gone against different well, players, so uh, you know, in, in the Pac-12, for instance, where they can give us great insight on some of these players. Thank you. You put them out new coaches. Obviously, we don't give sports. We don't give But Ephraim Manda is not a name really known. How did he get on your radar? And what can you do? Uh, what do you expect? Yeah, Ephraim was uh, somebody that came uh, highly recommended to us. And and we talked to a lot of people. We, we really were uh, diligent about this process. And I just think you have to be. And I think also with the, the league is being more deliberate about all of their hiring. I think that's one thing you saw the head coach hiring uh, this season as well. But try to spend as much time as we can to search every avenue for good young coaches, good coaches, period. Uh, so spent some time with that from uh, put him through uh, an interview did a ton of reference work on him and, and you know all that was so positive to get to know him and get to feel his energy he's, he's had a unique uh, path to coaching um, so certainly excited to get him in our building yeah, what, 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 yeah. yeah so good question so bill won't be in the quarterback room uh, 
uh, he'll be really contributing throughout our entire staff. Uh, Bill has a ton of experience as an offensive coordinator in this league. Obviously, experience as a planning quarterback, coaching the quarterbacks, coordinating offense. So he'll, he'll assist me in a bunch of areas. He'll assist ADP in a bunch of areas. But uh, day to day, he'll he won't be the quarterback. Kevin, you talked about you know locking yourself up in the game and watching the film. What's your favorite part about the film process? And what's your process like? You know, you turn on the tape and like, what are you looking for? Are you re watching the plays or watching? The game? Yeah, uh, you know, for me, I get to the. Uh, Oftentimes, I get to the comment, I don't know much about the players. I, I don't watch a ton. I love college football, but I don't get to watch a ton of it. So a lot of these, I know the name. My kids know the names better than I do at this point. But uh, I'll turn on the tape and, and usually put on games. Uh, so you'll you know, pick a game. You check the stat line, make sure the player played in that game, and you turn it on. And you know, I go back to Kevin Rogers, uh, one of our coaches, taught me how to watch tape and how to evaluate tape when I was a young coach. He just said, write what you see. He's very – pragmatic about it so i try to just write what i see on there and then after a while you feel like your notes are, are kind of matching up and formulating it and opinion on, uh, as you go but it takes time no, no uh secret you no know, can't snap your fingers but you don't watch the part okay with, with jim with jim wants to do defensively do you feel that you've got a lot of you know, in place i do yeah I, I really do i think steve with, with that front and with how we play uh how we've played, it's not a huge departure. We're not, uh, for instance, you know, we're, we're an over or an even front team. Uh, so we're not going to an under front or an odd front. So the front is in some ways remains the same. There's a ton of nuance that, in how you play it, which can vary. Uh, but uh, I think ultimately that the, the team is built uh, to transition nice into the gym school. What's the biggest feedback in your conversation? I mean, we've talked, we've talked about it. You know, so we're looking at this thing from A to Z, uh, from coaching uh, to our coaching staff to the players, uh, how we structure things. I mean, you know, I'm very, very fortunate to have him at the one side of my office. Bill Callahan, a former head coach on the other, on the other side, out the other door. So I have a lot of uh, very veteran guys that I can lean on. Um, and, and Jim's one. Jim, Jim's a, a great defense coordinator, as we know, but he's, he's, uh, he's run teams. He, he kind of sees things. And that lens would be very helpful to me as well. Kevin, how do you see, more. you know, David Bell and Don Jones, how do you see them progress from the beginning of last year to where they are now? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Donovan's a young man that has taken a step every season that he's been with us. Uh, I, I think he's worked his tail off in the weight room and, and on his body, and you see a guy that just is physically uh, developed. David Bell is, is super dependable, super reliable. When the ball came his way, he made a play. Uh, so excited about him, him taking that next step as well. What kind of relationship did AVP and Sean form last year? And did that play a role in why you want It AVP? did. Yeah, I, I think, you know, AVP is a former quarterback, has done it, has coached a bunch of guys, coached a lot of good players. So I think there, again, lends an instant credibility with AVP when you're talking about the quarterback position. Uh, and we spend a lot of time together. They spend We spend time in that meeting room spend time on the field and then just think uh, during games, AAP is the one sitting on that bench going over the picture. So there's a built-in relationship there. there there's, there's respect there. Uh, AVP is a player. Or AVP is a coach that can push this player uh, along with, with myself and, and the rest of our staff. But I just think there's a built-in relationship there. Good? Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks. So that was Coach Kevin Stefanski. He talked a lot about additions to their coaching staff, including Bill Musgrave, whose nephew, Luke, is here as a tight end from Oregon State. Um, my phone is about to die, so I need to get, get on the charger. We need, we, need, we need to get you a portable charger to hook up to your phone. So I, I always, I've always hooked up to a portable charger. Uh, that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get my phone on the charger. I'm down about 7%. Oh, that's low. You, you go do your thing, and I'll 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 do it from here. The rest. Hey, okay. look, any takeaway I should tell people? Um, okay, things that I think you should tell people. Um, you know, D'Amico Ryan's, you can see, you know, why everyone has, I mean, he has league-wide respect from everyone. You can, it just comes off him. Not just he's a knowledgeable football person. And a lot of times people say, you know, we don't just care about you as a, a player. We care about you as a man. I mean, it's, not, it's a cliche. Everybody says it. When you hear D'Amico Ryans deliver that same thing you hear from a million other coaches, you can tell he means it. 
Um, other things that I think stick with me, uh, two of the players I got a chance to speak to. One of them was Miles Murphy, uh, an amazing communicator and a guy that really pays attention to the tiny little details. He walked me through his weight from the moment he walked onto campus at Clemson to his current weight now and body fat percentage from going as high as 18, now down to about 13 and a half to 12%. Is this um, on video? The guy that Miles on Murphy. Video? On video? Um, I've got it somewhere on video. Yeah, I mean, it's. I just have to try to upload. I've been able to do it because, you know, I've been busy yeah. doing that. We got we to get, so we we get you to where you can be a zinny. You can do it all at once. <laughs> yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll set up a class for that because I realize there's a class for how I've been doing it. So, um, hey, I just I got an idea for another source of revenue. <laughs> hey, everybody, Bill Carroll's on the scene for us. We're producing. Hey, Bill, do you realize that if we I have two credentials, right? If there was uh -huh. only one um, and you went up there. Uh, you would not be able to get the emails that are coming that I send to you, you know, unless you knew to look okay. for them. So this is a pretty good team up. You know, it's good yeah. to have somebody, you know, like that, right? Yeah, yeah. well, it's like a high film. You yeah. know, you always have one in the truck while somebody exactly. else is being lowered down through the windowsill on a, you know, rappelling down from the rafters, you know, so they can, <laughs> you know, get the... Get the diamond without setting off the alarm system. Hey, let's do this. How long do you need to charge your phone? Which, well, I guess you just answered. How long do you need to charge your phone? I'll come back later. Or you want to come back later? Well, I mean, probably a couple of hours, I'm guessing, if I, you know, because it's, you know, we're, you know, I'm about 7%, like I said. So it's going to need to at least get over 50. Okay, you go do that. It'll take five right, hours, minutes, something like that. Okay, we'll see in two hours. How's that? Or thereabouts. Uh, can you hear me? Wow. Hey, Bill, we'll see you in two hours. How's that? Okay, sure. And then um, I'll okay. be going, you know, later to Rick Saratella's event. Oh, awesome, awesome. All right, man. All right, bro. Yeah. Okay. Great job. Great job. <laughs> hey, it's Thank a pretty you. day. There's no. Oh, there's no yeah. snow. No, no, it's very nice. It's been in the upper 40s to, I'm guessing it's probably around 50 today. I don't even, I'm wearing a windbreaker, but I don't need one. Hey, you know, I, just, I always, always have a jacket, whether I need one or not, just in case. Show us where you're walking. Turn around the camera. Turn the camera around. Oh, uh oh. Yeah, yeah. Show us which direction you're walking in. Oh, got dizzy. Ah, oh, whoa. He's learning, folks. <laughs> uh, vlogger training. Hmm. I should set up vlogger training. Yeah. Training for vloggers at, at events. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I should do. Hey, Bill, I'm going to go eat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Bill, yeah, perfect. Wow, yeah. look at that. Look at that. Yeah, wow. so wow. Um, you need another minute or two, and then I, my phone's going to die. Okay, we'll see ya. Okay. All right, all right. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, Bill, that's the uh, Phil. Everybody, Bill is going to do his thing. He's, he's covering uh, that. He's walking down the street. As you can see, Indianapolis today is a far cry from the indie when I was there in 2020 when it was just snow, cold, and rain. Oh my lord. It that's I don't I don't someone says global warming. I don't know. It's just weird weather. You know what I mean? You know what global warming is, folks? It's a lot of us. <laughs> More people on the planet than ever. So this is what I'm going to do, folks. Um I'm going to go and take a lunch break. I'm going to keep this up. I'm going to say uh, taking a lunch break. And Bill wants to come a break. Okay. 
back at um i've got a yeah i'll i'll, I'll back in an hour okay so if you yeah back in an hour all right okay okay cool so i'll be back thanks yeah he's gone actually what i'm going to do though is this is done you know what i'm going to let this go up and go and i'm going to let it go and have it become a static video there's too much good stuff on it. it needs to get out in the wild all right that ends this broadcast subscribe to zenny 62 and bookmark oaklandnewsnowblog.com we'll be back with a new live stream in an hour <laughs>